Margaret Wallace Duffy from WOW Living TV and welcome to part three of this hormonal health series brought to you by Rocky Mountain Analytical. Now if you happen to miss the first two shows, don't worry, you can tune in at wowliving.tv and be sure to follow us on the hashtag WOWTVHealth. Now sit back and relax and let's get this show started. I was feeling really sick. It was an all over body sickness. There's no other way to describe it. I was completely off. It felt like many systems just weren't working all at the same time. And I was in pain, like things hurt. I was I had pretty severe insomnia. Meanwhile, I was well. I was exercising, doing yoga, eating well because of my business and because I care very much about that. I thought I was well. The traditional medical system told me I was well. I was high functioning in my life, but I was ill and not sleeping. And what I learned was that it, as much as healthy eating and a healthy lifestyle of sport and balance, seeming balance, there's more to be dug into. So I jumped on Institute for Hormonal Health and I loved the medical-based testing that they did, that they got, that it was science-based first, and I'm a very practical person, so I love the science base of it first. And then immediately it was also non-traditional medicine, so it was a complete partnership. The testing results were shocking to me. Every single team member that I worked with at Hormonal Health made me get deeper into the reasons why I was feeling so ill. And what they did really well at that practice was you get the test results and then you, you work your way through several doctors and nutritionists all at once in the same afternoon. Then I was being taken care of right away by the team. I've learned so, so much. It's been, it's been amazing. It's been a couple year process for me worth every effort that I made. It makes me emotional to think about how far I've come, how far um, they pushed me, and how far I pushed myself. It's a lot of work. It's not easy. There's no pill. There's, there's definitely testing and then hormonal replacement. One of the testing results showed that, um, you know, serotonin levels were really low. Meanwhile, I wasn't depressed. Like I wasn't, I was an active, finding joy in my life, things going well person. But when they said, why do you think those serotonin levels are so low? I immediately knew it's because I missed my career. And it was so clear to me that that was it, the missing piece. And I just rejuggled everything at home and made sure I got the energy and the people behind me to do my life's passion. Every level of the practice kind of helped me to find that balance to fully embrace working again and fully embrace being with my family as well and um, having the energy to do it. It's exciting to be balanced again. Thank you, Nancy, for sharing your story and really making it real for all of us. I know I can relate, and I'm sure there are many women at home that can too. Now, we have a handsome gentleman in our studio tonight, one of the very few when we're talking about hormonal health, Paul Wright, our social media guru. How are things going over on our social media hub? Well, Margaret, thank you, and I'm so happy to be here once again. We are so, oh, we're just getting inundated by tweets on WOW TV Health. That's hashtag wow TV health. Let's continue the conversation, keep things going. Keep up the good work, everyone, in cyberspace. Thank you, Paul. So Dr. Prouse, when we're talking about the gut, how does that relate to hormones? Yeah, 
excellent question because, of course, it does seem like a bit of a, a stretch. But when you're dealing with hormones, uh, you've got to work at it at all angles. And the other thing we need to do is work back to the root cause. And so if we go back to the initial show that we had, looking at cortisol, cortisol is that foundation hormone. And when it is out of whack, it starts to impact on a whole lot of other sy sy systems, including the thyroid, estrogen, progesterone, testosterone, the gastrointestinal tract. Mm -hmm. When cortisol is an issue, right, and we talked about the stressors, whether it being emotional and psychological, any infections in the body, inflammation, Toxins. Food sensitives, environmental toxins, absolutely. Those all impact on, on cortisol and therefore on the gastrointestinal tract. And what we will see start to happen is issues with maldigestion, mm -hmm. malabsorption, dysbiosis in the gut, which is an imbalance between the good and the bad bacteria, as well as something um, called leaky gut syndrome or intestinal hyperpermeability. And really what that is, is that the cells that line the gastrointestinal tract, they're meant to be tightly fixed together so that food stays within our gastrointestinal tract. But with stress and cortisol issues, those cells start to pull apart. Mm -hmm. Food particles sneak between the cells. They get into our general circulation. Our body's going to recognize those as being, uh, recognize those as being foreign and mount an IgG reaction is what it's called. And your body develops a sensitivity to foods. Mm -hmm. uh, you can have sensitivities to other things as well. Really, ultimately, that actually feeds back and calls on cortisol once again and is a bit of a vicious circle. Uh, when the gastrointestinal tract is not functioning optimally, the, the food complexes that our body is going to have the greatest difficulty breaking down and absorbing are the amino acids. Mm -hmm. Amino acids are the building blocks for all of the proteins that we need in our body, including our brain neurotransmitters, our brain hormones, the hormones that make us happy, keep us mellow, keep our impulses in check, mm -hmm. keep us asleep, build our muscles, all sorts of things. Which tie in to all of those signs and symptoms as a menopausal woman experience. Mm -hmm. It's so crucial. Absolutely. We had one system that we were allowed to treat to have the greatest impact and the greatest number of, uh, of symptoms. It's going to be that gastrointestinal tract. And having sensitivities, I mean, I, I'm sure you have a lot of women that are really sort of taken back by that. Um, you know, even people that supposedly eat really healthy mm -hmm. and eat really well. Is that true? Yeah, absolutely. It is really important to know as one of the causes of, of drains on the adrenals is, is somebody's food sensitivities. Mm -hmm. Because simply when you develop that IgG reaction, you are calling upon cortisol to combat it and therefore further depleting it. And so to identify what uh, bothers them to the body in the first place and eliminate it goes a long way in, in healing. And it certainly was an eye-opener for me because it can be healthy things, things that I love to eat. So that, thank you so much for sharing yeah, because I know it made a huge impact having that test done yeah, for me. For sure. yeah, yes. You could be absolutely eating brilliantly, but if you're eating foods that you're sensitive to, from an adrenal perspective, it isn't helping you out any. All right, thank yeah. you. We will be back with more, with more from Dr. Prowse. But now we're gonna revisit Nancy in her house where there's a tree and she's got some really cool cooking lessons for us. Watch this. I believe in a four-tiered approach to a nourished life. Explore cuisine with great curiosity. Grow in essential culinary life skills. Heal mind and body with top quality food experiences. And connect with the inner foodie, family, friends and community with food. I write recipes, I teach people how to cook and I follow this philosophy in my own cooking um, and learning a chef life. I like to do this with my recipes. I call them systems, and I give uh, the reader lots of information so to empower them in their own kitchens to make the recipe their own, explore markets and amazing farms and fresh cuisine, and um, connect with their inner foodie, trust their senses, and experiment. So uh, the recipes that I provide are longer. They're, they include cooking skills, um, lots of tips for making things easier, lots of tips for changing recipes around, and ultimately you're empowered to um, enjoy yourself in the kitchen and just crumple up that recipe and toss it away. 
So the recipe that we're working on today is a Chinese hot pot soup. Chinese hot pot soup is really fun because again, it's open to so many different variations. So depending on the picky eaters in your house or um, dietary concerns that you need, you can just pick the ingredients that you want and throw them in the pot. So here's some of the ingredients that we're working with today. Red plums and uh, whole star anise and galangal, which is a, another root like a uh, fresh ginger, and fresh ginger is also amazing in this recipe. Fresh lemongrass, um, Thai basil or sweet basil works really well. We've got seaweed, we've got lime leaves, which are incredible in, in, for a lime flavoring. Uh, coriander seed, tons of, of um, color. Some other ingredients to add to my omnivore hot pot soup. Uh, chicken, chopped chicken, so I had already added some chopped chicken. And then I've got black beans, and then I have a fermented black bean paste, and seaweed and bamboo shoots, and then all the vegetables that we saw before, the inaki mushrooms, Chinese cut celery, julienne, carrots and peppers, some bok choy, some leek, and um, some watercress and the star anise and the ginger or, or galangal and these, these beautiful noodles. So now I'm just gonna add them. Now this, just a point to think about, if you're adding any of these prepared sauces, fermented ingredients are really good for us, but they can also be quite high in salt. So that is why I like to do my systems and tell you, tell you guys to do it to taste. So I've got my chef knife, I've got a really safe cutting board that's held firmly in place by that mat underneath the cutting board. Then I'm keeping my fingers out of the way and chop, 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 chop. So I thought this would be fun to just go really big because this, this soup is almost like a stew. So you just chop it really big. So I'm gonna pop the mushrooms into both of those. So in this pot, I've been stewing whole star anise pods um, and some beautiful lemongrass and the lime leaves that I showed you. And now I'm also gonna just add my, my gorgeous veg to soften that up and it makes this amazing soup stew. And you just wanna brew it, you might, if you have an hour, it tastes much better if you can brew the whole thing for an hour, and it's actually fabulous the next day. It, it almost improves in quality the next day, this delicious uh, um, soup. So this has thickened up a lot, this, this one, so I'll probably taste it and add a little bit more water. We're gonna put our noodles in and wait for that to soften up, and there you've got a meal in itself. So whatever your favorite vegetables are, your favorite proteins, throw them in. And you've got meal, in fact, this is uh, meals and snacks for the next week. So when we're looking at hormonal health in this three-part series, let's take a look at testing. Now what kind of tests are available and what can we draw from the information that we get from some of these tests? Okay, and I'll, I'll take one step back again and say, yes, we, we can measure the hormone levels and, and we should, uh, but there's other things that we have to remember. If we've got other clues from the history and physical that there's a nutritional issue, or maybe that the person's sensitive to one of the foods that they're eating, or you know, there's some, some key vitamin that they're missing, then we have to keep that in the back of our mind. Uh, when we see this hormonal pattern that we uncover from the hormone testing, then uh, we need to, we've already got an idea in the back of our mind about where else we should be looking. So, yeah, so uh, to measure the hormones, there's many different ways you can do it now. You can measure it in your blood, of course. You can measure it in your urine, your saliva. You can, you can measure hormones in your hair. You can find out how stressed you are in the last month by taking a piece of your hair and measuring the cortisol level. Nah, you know. You can poke your finger and let, it, let the, drug, the blood dry on a little card send that in. So there's many different ways to measure those hormone levels and I think it's essential because it gives you, it gives you the, the clues of where you need to look. It, it, isn't, uh, it isn't the prescription for what ails you and sometimes the treatment is not, not to just prescribe hormones, it's to look back at the whole picture, and get all the clues and then have treatments on many different levels and using many different modalities. Thank you, Dr. Gilson, for taking the time out of your busy schedule to enlighten us with some of your great information. Now, WOW TV, it's all about connecting, and not just with our live audience, but with you at home. What's happening out there in Cyberworld? Well, Marg, we want to thank everyone for all the positive interaction 
on the hashtag WowTVHealth. It's incredible the amount of uh, tweets that have been coming in. And remember, we want to continue this conversation after the series. Mm -hmm. You know, engage, build our social community, and with the experts and people alike, sharing is going to be something really important, and that's what this is all about. You betcha. Now, we do have a social media question that Great. came through. Uh, it's from Carrie, and uh, she was asking, can hormonal imbalance cause weight gain? <laughs> well, we know there are many women at home and in the studio audience that are dying for this answer. Please, Dr. Prouse, can you speak to that? Yeah, absolutely. Weight management is um, a, a big struggle for a lot of women. There is really no easy answer to that because the cause for difficulties with weight management are really multifactorial and you do have to look at it yet again from every angle. Most of us, of course, are aware that eating right and exercising are incredibly important and, of course, uh, we are going to be touching base with that in the, in, in the not too distant future. But uh, there are other things that we often really don't sleep, think about. Sleep, for example, mm -hmm. being absolutely critical to regenerate some of these hormones, but from a weight management perspective, uh, really quite important. Um, we have to consider our, our, the reason why we have fat tissue in the first place. And right. one of the reasons is to sequester environmental toxins out of circulation, where they will do less harm. So when you cleanse somebody, detoxify, push out those toxins, fat will often follow. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's why we call it releasing a fat, mm -hmm. not losing weight. Yes. Right? Correct. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. Um, you know, so that's covering what, one other angle. Hormonal balance, of course. There's a lot of hormones that work against your weight, right? Uh, hypothyroid conditions, cortisol issues, estrogen progesterone imbalance. The gastrointestinal tract is not functioning optimally. Mm -hmm. uh, the neurotransmitters themselves feed back and, and make it very challenging for, particularly from um, an impulse point of view, to, to hold back. The other thing that um, is very interesting when it comes to weight management, or at least interesting for me as a hormonal specialist, yes. <laughs> um, is looking at the, the epigenetics, the environmental influence uh, that has on our genetic expression. The genes that we were born with are the genes that we're going to die with, but our genetic expression does change, change. over a lifetime. Mm -hmm. The genes that were turned off when we were younger get turned on when we were older, or vice versa. They were meant to be turned on and they get turned off. And that really is happening because of these stressors. And we have now figured out the youth cluster genes associated um, with weight management, the fat burning gene, the fat storage gene, the muscle building gene, uh, the genes that are responsible for our perception of our, mm -hmm. our satiety or when we're hungry. What are the sorts of things that we reach for when, when, we're, uh, when, we're, when we're hungry? And so that's looking at it from an entirely different angle. And we can look at that genetic expression and revert back to a more youthful state. So there is an awful lot that goes into weight management and it really needs to be explored from every angle and therefore addressed. Yeah, time. and as a menopausal woman, um, I know that I saw a social media question coming through um, about, you know, I've always been active, and the way I've never had a weight issue, and then all of a sudden, you know, mm -hmm. you hit perimenopause and menopause, and everything changes. Mm -hmm. It's very discouraging um, mm -hmm. for women. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, it, I think we do need to speak to, once again, the mind-body connection, and how we're going to talk a little bit later about intentional thinking, and how the bad talk that we do to ourselves, mm -hmm. how absolutely. that can impact. Is, do you, would you agree? Oh, I, absolutely. It certainly does. And uh, that mind-body connection is very powerful. It really is. Mm -hmm. And I can't wait to bring on the rest of our panel to discuss, uh, to discuss that first because it is really a big issue and we do need to address it. Right. Thank you so much. You're always full of so much great information. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So when it comes to exercise, uh, what I, we often see at, at Aura is that those that have developed mind mastery, those that are more conscious of their thinking, produce better results, whether it be body composition restructuring or whether it be improving their strength, their endurance, whatever. Because uh, of the powerful connection between the mind and the body. Whatever thoughts we have sends messages to the body, it determines how we feel, and how we feel motivates our action. In the gym, as well as you know, assisting people to develop really good exercise technique, what I wanna know is what's their mental fitness like? So what are the thoughts that are running around in their head? So if I invite a client to perhaps do um, a plank or a push-up, 
If they get down on the ground and the first thought that they have, and I'll ask them is, this exercise is too hard, I can't do it, I'm not strong enough, then their body is going to respond accordingly to their thoughts. Just because a thought arises in your head, you don't have to, you don't have to entertain it. It's yeah. not the truth. And most, most of the times it's not, That's right? right. Uh, right. So we can change those thoughts and starting to pay attention to how when we change those thoughts, what physiological responses we have. And absolutely uh, what we think determines the results that we get. So there are a lot of studies these days and a lot of scientific evidence that proves the power of the relationship between uh, mind and body. Reality is not how we perceive reality to be. Reality is actually reality in and of itself. We can choose what we want to experience in our world by what we choose to put out through our thoughts, because our thoughts, our thoughts are like filters. We really want to invite people to ask questions. Uh, we understand that for a lot of people, this is a new idea. Even though the whole mind-body connection, we, you know, it's a buzzword. We have a sense of what it means. Um, this is really about, you know, what we want is people to to find out where they hold the power, to learn the strategies, to learn the techniques. And really, this is what this whole program is about: is being able to deliver that information so that people feel empowered, so they have the resources that they need to uh, to create the life that they want. And um, so, I'm just excited to be a part of it. Now, I would like to introduce you to Ashna Sterrett, who is a holistic healthcare practitioner and has a doctorate in holistic medicine. Check this out. If you have a sensitivity, your body at some point has shut down um, through stress. So what, what I go is I go about doing is using different therapies to unblock the body, turn that switch back on so that your body recognizes that item that you're sensitive to and then it can behave in the way it should with breathing in that item or eating that item or uh, how your body should function. Can you explain some of the things that you see people for that maybe people at home might relate to? Digestion issues, brain fog, migraines, headaches. So it's really about having a really solid foundation and when this foundation is in there, it, things are weak and, and it doesn't matter what you're building on top of that foundation, if it's weak, it doesn't function as well. Right. And so seeing somebody like you, which is why I think another reason working together collaboratively with other healthcare professionals like you do with the Institute for Hormonal Health really does give a, an entire holistic approach for people so that they are going to see phenomenal results because you're, you're working together and building that foundation from the ground up. Absolutely. Well, we're now joined here in the studio with an incredible panel. Let me introduce you to them. Of course, the woman that you just seen on the tape, Ashna Sterrett, is here with me. Welcome, Ashna. Thank you. And Michelle Armstrong from Aura, the founder and a transformational specialist. Welcome. Thank you. So let's start with you, Ashna. When we've been talking about you know everything from weight gain and the gut and intentional thinking, when you work with patients at the Institute for Moral Health, how, how does that play into this topic? Well, if we look at weight management, one of the important pieces to that is understanding what type of buildup of yeast um, a person might ha have in their body. And two reasons for that and how it affects weight is a byproduct of uh, yeast is alcohol. And alcohol in the gut is going to cause all sorts of problems and what it's going to lead to is where the body should be metabolizing efficiently, it won't, it'll store first. So the, it'll compromise the metabolism. So a woman needs to, or a man, needs to look at their yeast issue and eliminate that, and there's several ways to go about that. Thank you, that's very, very interesting. Now Michelle, such a powerful clip about intentional thinking. And I think as a woman I know firsthand, I can have some bad self-talk and I try to work very, very hard at switching that. And as a therapist in our clinic at Wallace for Wellness, our wonderful team often looks at the impact that stress has on our body physiologically. And we see it on our tables when we start to lay on hands, we get emotional releases in this bubbling up. And we hear men and women alike talking negatively about themselves. Mm -hmm. When per that's, someone is in the gym with you mm -hmm. and they're transforming their life, Forget the weight, they're transforming their life. Mm -hmm. How do you help? Well, you know, I think Dr. Prowse, uh, you know, hit on something that's really important, that there are a lot of factors to consider when it comes to weight management. Uh, you know, we're looking at nutrition, looking at hormones, uh, environmental influences, uh, and certainly our psychology is important. Uh, so what we think about, we bring about, and our thoughts actually have the ability to impact our hormones. So, you know, one of the great things about exercise, and we absolutely want to make it a lifestyle, 
is that uh, it releases a lot of uh, in, endorphins and, and things that allow us to, to feel better about ourselves. Uh, and you know, there's all sorts of different suggestions for what type of exercise regime is best uh, for weight management. But at the end of the day, and based on my personal experience, it really comes down to every individual woman and, and what she likes to do with her body and what works best for her. You know, some studies will say that heavy weightlifting or strength training is the way to go. Um, but in actual fact, that just isn't always the case for every single uh, person. And so I think it's really important that uh, you know, women speak to all the different experts and that they really listen and, and pay attention to their own bodies so that they can really uh, get a sense of what's going to work best for them. Uh, but we certainly want to be doing some form of exercise, without a doubt. I know when I was here in the gym with you and you were yes. working with someone, it was a really powerful moment when I listened to you actually ask the woman before she went to do a plank, yes. what are you thinking? Yes. You know, what are you telling yourself in yeah. your head? Yeah. And she stopped for a moment and looked at you. Mm -hmm. And I found that really, really powerful. Mm -hmm. And what did she tell you? Well, she said, I think she said that she was going to puke, didn't she? <laughs> <laughs> And I, which is, uh, to be honest, I said, well, you know, is that something that's going to motivate you to do this <laughs> exercise? And I was kind of shocked when she responded and yes. actually said yes. <laughs> yes. So, you know, we went with that. And, um, you know, I have some clients in the audience here and I often play a few tricks with them uh, whereby uh, just by shifting their thinking, they actually perform uh, a lot better in the gym and get much better results. Right. So I don't recommend uh, puking as your motivational <laughs> strategy, but you got to go you got to go with, with what works for you and the reason I brought that up and and you know not to poke fun at that but I do mm -hmm. think as women um, and men but we're talking about women here we do have this internal dialogue I can't or yes. I shouldn't or mm -hmm. really I'm not feeling I can't you know it's, it's in that constant cycle of information through mm -hmm. our heads and it doesn't have to be that way and simply re jigging that conversation in our own head can really empower you to give you the strength to move on Absolutely. I mean, I think our thoughts and beliefs, through our thoughts and beliefs, we put massive limitations on ourselves, uh, both in the gym, both in life, and, uh, and also for the process of healing. And some, and, you know, just by changing our thought to say, I am going to heal, I am going to be healthy, I can exercise, I can be that fit, fabulous woman that I want to be inside, uh, that can literally uh, shift everything and, and change the world around you. And I think it's really important that we, we tune into that in a dialogue, for sure. And as we look at a panel like this, let's be candid to all the women at home. Yep. People pass judgments when they judge a book by its cover. Yep. Every woman is different, yes. and they should be different. Absolutely. Would we agree? And so I think you know what you want out of your own body and your own health is really your own journey. And that's yes. what you've touched on, Dr. Prowse, through this entire series, talking about how you need to link arms and have a team that can come at it from all different angles, including the patient. I love the fact that Dr. Gilson spoke about ask the patient. Mm -hmm. What do they think is wrong with them? That's really, really powerful. And I really want the women at home to recognize that this series was a starting foundation to start a conversation about their own well-being, yes. and which is different for you and you and you. And I certainly know with my 22 years of experience at Wallace for Wellness and the power of touch, you never can judge a book by its cover. We all have had our own journey and our own story, Absolutely. and we don't always look what we present and um, we all have our challenges and that's I think what I'm hoping and I hope you feel this way too that this series has really helped to empower women to do that yeah absolutely, absolutely. so Dr. Prowse you've been absolutely amazing through this whole series thank you for your time and your energy uh, and your expertise uh, you truly have been not only an inspiration to me from a medical perspective but just as a woman and that's really really important thank you, thank you so much Michelle if it wasn't for you we wouldn't be opening this studio and Ashna you know looking at you know bioenergetic therapies really opening people's minds to possibilities I really appreciate that so thank you for joining me
And for all of you at home and here in the studio audience, thank you for tuning in to this three-part series on hormonal health. This would not have been possible without the generous support of Rocky Mountain Analytical and many other people behind the scenes. We want to continue this conversation. This is just the tip of the iceberg. So please reach out to us on wowliving.tv. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter. And you've heard from Paul, follow the hashtag wowtvhealth. It has been an absolute pleasure to be inside your living rooms and we really do want to continue this conversation until next time stay well be well and ladies think positively take care